Mm, am I recording? Always. Am I recording? No, okay, let's just assume I'm recording. Um, okay, so we did what the other day? Insertion sort? Selection. Selection sorts. Selection sort is one where we just repeatedly find the largest element in a list and then put that element at the back. Um, so in the same sort of spirit of that problem, where like we restricted ourselves to exactly one type of operation on a list, I'm going to now restrict us to swapping adjacent cells. So if the only thing we're able to do in a list is swap adjacent cells, could we sort a list using only swaps, adjacent swaps? Yes, how? <laughs> Bubble sort, yeah. If check for every element that that element isn't greater than the next, and if it is greater than the next, then swap. Sure. Yeah, so we look at two adjacent elements in a list, and then we always swap to make the larger element move forward, if we're sorting in ascending order, the opposite for descending. So after, once, after one scan through the list, after performing, um, after agreeing that we should swap larger terms forward, one pass will mean that one element is sorted in the back. The largest element should have bubbled its way to the top. Second pass, the second element will bubble to the top. Third, the third element will bubble to the top. So if we repeat this, eventually the list will be sorted. So here's a sort of diagram of how this works. So what we see in gray here are the uh, elements that are being compared. And we see that if we compare 54 and 26, that 54 gets pushed forward. And then we compare 54 and 93, and we don't swap because 54 is less than 93. The remaining lines here show that 93 is the largest element of the whole list, so it just bubbles, bubbles its way to the top. So this is one scan of the list, and after one scan of the list, we see that we have one item in position. How many scans in total will we have to do at most? Scans? You do n scans, right? Yeah. So not n squared, right? N scans, even though those scans take n walks, right? So, um, so right, because I said after one scan, there's one position, there's one position in order. So after n scans, the whole thing should be in order. So we're gonna have to write a piece of code that swaps while some condition is true, right? While the list is unsorted. How do I know that the list is unsorted? If there's, um, if like after you see that one number is greater than the next one, if you're sorting in ascending order, or if you see that one element is less. I don't want to have to scan the list to confirm that it's in order. That's doubling the amount of work we're doing. There's, yeah. Provide, so if I scan the list and I don't swap anything, that means the list is sorted, right? That means I didn't find any two, any two um, positions that are out of order. So I just have to sort of monitor um, if in the last loop we did no swaps, then the list is sorted. Okay, so let's write this code. Not uh, from typing, import list. Definition of bubble sort x's list returns none. Oh. So performs in place sort uh, ascending sort of x's. And maybe we'll do one doc. Bubble sort this, and then we print this and should see what? Minus six, one, one, two, two, seven. Okay, so I want to do something like while, um, and it's going to write semi pseudocode here. Right, so I'm just going to put a one so it's proper syntax. Uh, while list is unsorted, which means that we have to have some type of flag um, swapped equals true. So while the last iteration swapped, 
list is unsorted. So now what do I have to do? I have to bubble. So that means I have to walk, okay, so I have to walk the list and I'm switching elements forward, right? So that means in my walk here, I'm going to have to not like do one less, right? Because I always want to uh, look at a position in the position after it, which means I should stop at one less than the length of the list. So if it is the case that x is at k is greater than x is at k plus one, then I should perform the swap, right? And the swap looks like this, x is at k, x is at k plus one is equal to, uh, actually it turns out I don't need, even need these brackets. Uh, x is at k plus one, x is at k. So that's a swap, then I have to say something like swapped equals true. And then here I say swapped equals false, right? So every scan, it's a new opportunity to not swap anything. Okay, let's see. I just want to write in that, uh, whoops. I just want to grab this. Uh, okay, so let me just, I need a random list. You can do it like that. See? Uh, what was I doing? I need a random list. Okay, so x is, is a random, whoops, not rand list, random int a random integer between minus 10 and 10 uh, for, let's say, k in range, and how many do we want? I'll just say n. Uh, n maybe is 20. Okay, so let's see if we can sort a list of 20. Bubble sort. To be or not to be? Maybe it's 1b. Yeah. Okay, let's just run this before criticizing it, because maybe it's working perfectly. Um, where am I? Where am I? Not in the right place. Oh no, I was in the right place. Uh, Tuesday. That looks right. Whoops. Cool. Maybe try writing the doc test. Oops, what am I doing? I am not in good shape today, guys. Right. Oh boy. Failed zero, attempted three. So just keep in mind that each of these technically are a doc test. So we passed the doc test of this and this, but the last one's the only one we care about. Okay, so that is fine. So let's now try and do some timing. So from time it import time it. And I'm just going to write a timing function. Um, def one list sort. One list sort, um, let's give it the length of the list. Length. Uh, so let's just generate a list of size length. Um, let's sort the list. And just return nothing. And then I can say time it, and remember that I need to sort of wrap this one list sort. Maybe we can try a list of a size 100, and we'll ask this to do it five times. And hopefully this will work. Whoops. Oh, I need to print something. Um, I need to print this. Zero six eight five. I should write these somewhere. Um, so this is for bubble. This is length of list. This is time. Okay, so the length of the list a hundred and time in seconds. What did we have? We got this. Okay, let's multiply it by ten. So this was ten to the power of two. Let's now do ten to the power of three. 
You remember, th this is time for five. I should write that for five sorts, right? Okay. That is for length 10 to the power of three. Nope, two. This is 10 to the power of three. Okay, 10 to the power of four. This may have been a mistake, but at least I got to have a breath. Do you know how terrible I felt yesterday when I uploaded that? Like I was, I was on, I was driving. I couldn't like fix it. So I actually like pulled over to the side of the road and called my wife. I FaceTimed my wife and I like walked her through the procedure for like removing something from the GitHub. What do I type? Type git remove. This is an emergency. She's like, emergency math? This is emergency math. <laughs> 20 minutes it was up for, exactly 20 minutes. Could you imagine if I forgot about it till like this morning? I would have had, we would have had to like deploy a different assignment. Oh God, they're gonna fire me. Oh. Why is it taking so long? Did we write a terrible sorting procedure? All right, let's kick this down to one then. We'll just multiply the result by five. Like what did you think when you saw the solution? In the code. What? Seventeen seconds. Let's just do that times five. Okay, I'm not going to do any more because we're already going to be waiting in the in the order of minutes now for solutions, but. Um, so I'm multiplying the length of the list by 10, and the uh, timings are going up by 100, right? So every time I increase the list by rank 10, you, you have a 100-fold increase in the, in the timing, right? This is what we call quadratic uh, time complexity, right? Because you have to square to get the timing, and this is bad, right? Already, we have to wait. 17 seconds to sort a list of 10,000. That, that's not really that much. Like, you should expect to be sorting things of like a billion, like a trillion, right? So and we definitely can't wait around for, you know, days to sort a list, right? So clearly all of these methods that we're using now aren't going to, aren't going to cut it, right? And this is really the essence of computer science, right? Just because you can figure out an algorithm that sorts a list doesn't mean that it's practical in any meaningful sense. Right, so we're going to have to put on our thinking caps, but only next year. You guys aren't ready to do any type of thinking yet. We just need you guys to learn syntax at the moment. Okay, so what's our next sort? Is insertion. Okay, so now we're going to restrict ourselves to a different uh, sort of list operation. So now, we have the ability, given a sorted list, I can put one element into the sorted list properly. Right, so if I give you that as a function, can you sort a list? Obviously, the answer is yes, right? because I posed it, and we're going to continue, but how would I do it? Yeah. Oh, hold on. Let me let, let him. Okay. Nope, you're describing selection sort. Yeah. Well, okay, continue. If this is selection sort, though, I'm failing you. Selection sort, you fail. You don't have the ability to find the largest element. I took that away. I, you're describing the method to like insert the, I'm telling you I, you have that. I give you a function that can insert an element into a sorted list. 
Now use that function to sort a list. Okay, no, I'm shutting her down. <laughs> this is the answer. You, it may be right. Maybe I'm just not understanding it. I'm grumpy today, right? And none of you brought me coffee, and I'm already half done. Okay, so if I, we can take a list, and I can look at its first element, right? So I can slice the list. If I take a list slice of length one, is that list sorted? Yeah, a list of length one has to be sorted. Okay. So now I can take the second position in the list and insert it into the slice, right, the one element list, to get a sorted list of two elements, right? So now in my list, the first two elements are sorted, and I can take the third element of the list and place the third element in the sorted list, that is the two elements that are at the front of the list. And now I have three elements that are sorted, and I can continue this process. So I'm going to show you the picture. So, first iteration, we assume that the list 54 is sorted. We look at 26, and then we insert 26 into the list 54, and we get 26, 54, right? So, when we insert, the list should grow by length 1. Um, so, now we have two elements at the front of the list sorted, 26 and 54. The next thing I want to insert is 93. So I ask where it is 93, go into the uh, sorted list 2654. Well, it turns out it goes at the end. It's the biggest. Then I look at 17. I ask where does 17 get placed among the sorted list 265493. Turns out that gets put at the front. Right? So you see after one, two, three, four steps, we should have four of these elements sorted from the beginning. Okay, so let's write this code. But let's um, break it up into two pieces, right? Because I'm going to need to insert into a list. And this is a little bit nuanced. Okay, so um, let us write this now. Okay, definition insert. We're going to insert into this list at, la at maybe position k. Uh, no, we're going to ins. Okay, we're going to insert the kth position at j, and this should return none. Inserts xk at jth position, right? Assumes list is, assumes x's through k is a sorted list. And that j is less than k strictly. Right, so x of k is the thing that's last in the list. Okay, so think about what we have to do now. So I have to go into the list. And I have to insert something at the jth position, which means that everything has to move up by one. And I have to roll the list upwards. Now, um, so I have to look at positions i in range j through k and do this, right? So x is at j plus 1 gets x is at j. Yeah? It's wrong, and I want to know why. So this is supposedly uh, uh, push the list forward from J. It's easy to find out what's wrong. The zeroth element. Right. Oh, if the link list is is of length one, uh, then we're going to insert at zero, and the list becomes of length two. So I don't see how that's a problem. Yeah. Uh, are you up there. Yeah, so I've just set every every I've just set every list element but from J through K to the same thing. Right? Because I'm saying position seven gets position six. And then position eight gets position seven, which just got set to position six. Then position eight gets set to position seven, which is position six. So I'm setting like I'm shifting the list up, but I'm losing the information as I'm pushing it forward. Right? I'm always copying the same element. So maybe we can just do this in um 
So here's um, one, two, three, four, five. And suppose I want to insert at length, um, suppose I want to insert in between two and three, seven, right? So I want to get a list maybe that looks like y. One, two, seven, three, four, five. So if I do a for loop for uh, i in range from the second position to length of x's, and I do x's at i plus 1, well, which is going to fail. Shiza. If I do x's at i plus 1, gets x's at i. I've just set everything to the end to 3's. OK, so what do I do instead? Well, I can't push forward. Yeah. You need a lot of them. You need one at each iteration. There's this, that is would work. OK, but there's a simpler solution. Yeah. Go through backwards, right? So go from k to j. Uh, OK, I have to be careful with the indexes here. Uh, okay, so I'm going from k to j. j is going to be excluded. I'm walking by minus 1. So now what do I want to do? I want to say the kth position. Oh, not the kth position, sorry. The ith position gets set to the position that's below it. Right, so 8 gets 7, 7 gets 6, 6 gets 5. Right, that's going to work. Um, we do need one temporary variable, though. Which, which one do we need to remember? What have we lost? We've lost exactly one element here. Which element have I lost moving downward? Well, I have to set this position to something. What's going in the jth position? Read the doc string. The <laughs> Insert x's at k at the jth position. So now at the jth position, I have to insert x's of k. Where is x's of k? I've overwritten it, right? So we do need one temporary variable, just so I can do this. Right, because if you imagine we have that like last position, and the first thing we do is move something into it. So it gets overwritten. Right, so I have to remember one variable. OK, so let's just check that this works. Um, Let's just go, whoops, I need an interactive mode. I also don't want to do timings. Today's not my day. Uh, let's get rid of you. Um, OK, uh, we need a list. We need three, four, five, six. 7, 8. OK, so if, if the third position is 4 and I insert into x's the seventh position, is there a seventh position? Yeah. Uh, into the third. So should the 7 be on the left or the right of the 4? Was it right? Oh, sorry, not the 7, the 8, because the 8 is in the 7th position. I should have counted from 1, uh, from 0. Um, no, it goes to the left of 4. It doesn't matter. Like We just have to make sure to like know what our insert is doing. So recall our insert is going to move to like the left of the position and push the list upwards. Um, we could try it again. Let's let me make, let's let me make a better list. Uh, so I can insert, insert uh, into x's at position 3. We'll insert the 5. Where did the 5 go? OK, so there's a bug in the code. OK, that's a good thing that we worked that out. Where x is at 3 is what? 0, 1, 2, 3. So 3 should have been moved. No, I'm moving the fifth position into the third. So what's the fifth position? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. OK, so my 5 has disappeared. What has happened? Where's the bug in my code? Anyone?
Huh? It's working. But like where, okay, so let, look here, like where did my five go? Okay, so maybe, uh, maybe I can really restrict this. Zero, one, two, and I want to insert into X's, uh, I don't have many options. I want to insert the second position at the first. So this should just mean that the one and two get swapped. Oh, okay. But where, where's like, where's my five? Where did the five go? Right? There's definitely a five in the original list. Right, so I want to insert at the, I want to insert the maybe third position. What's the third position? Three. And I want to insert that at the first position. So we should get zero, three, then one. Zero, three, then one, then two, then four, and five. Okay, that seems to work. My five's still there. Yeah. When we call the function that we get, or the procedure that the previous time we set k to a value that was less than j. So I think that's the result. Oh, okay. So I didn't follow my own restrictions. Anyways, okay, so I think we have a working insert. So let me return none. Uh, so now let's do the insertion sort. Uh, so I take x's, that's a list, this returns none. Uh, sorts the list in ascending order using insertion sort technique. Sorts the list in ascending order, in place sorts the list in ascending order. Okay, so what did I have to do? I'm just gonna grab this same doc string here. This should be insertion sorts. Uh, okay, so what do I gotta do? I have to walk the list. Except for the last position. No, 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 including the last, no, no, no. Okay, because I'm going to assume in this list, I'm going to assume that x is to k is sorted, right? So I shouldn't walk to the end because there's no list processing that's required if the whole list is sorted. So I'm going to assume that that slice is sorted. Then I'm going to say for j in range uh, to k this time, if X is at K is greater than, sorry, is less than X is at J strictly, then I should insert into X's the kth position at J. Uh, okay, that's the last straw. Let's see what we got. I need a random list. Let's just do it down here. In Inertion sort is not defined. Insertion sort. Oh, it worked. Yeah, I just forgot to print it. Whoops, that's good, yep, yep, yep. Okay, so maybe the doc test. Wait, doc test. We failed. Oh, did we fail this example? Oh, I think I do have to walk to the end of the list. Of course I have to walk to the end of the list. Yeah. Uh, where is insertion? Okay, great. That works. Okay, so now the next thing we have to do is just investigate the timings. So one list sort, let's just do insertion. Sort this time. I'm just going to get rid of this. Uh, right, so we were timing for 5, so I'm just going to multiply this by 5, uh, I'm going to make this a loop, 
four n in what did we start at two and ended at four let's see what we got oh. all right so I'll just fill out our table so for insertion Did you not do a 10 to the 4? Is this faster? So for 10 squared, we got this. For 10 cubed, we got this. And for 10 to the power of 4, we got this. Whoops. So it seems that our insertion sort is a little bit better than our bubble sort. At, at least for the one example we chose. This may not be, may, this may not be too fair because I, I only timed one example. So maybe I'll rerun, rerun it. I'll let it do it five times, but I'm not going to let it run for very far. So now we got a three, four, nine. No, it's fairly accurate. Okay, it just seems that our bubble sort is much less efficient somehow. Weird. Um, but you see in both cases that a tenfold increase in the length of the list corresponds to a hundredfold increase in the timing, which is bad. So what, what time do we got? 9.52. Um, okay, so... For next class, rather than using timings, because it's not a very good way of measuring the efficiency of an algorithm, right? Because two timings on the same computer may be different. Timings across machines are definitely going to be different. What we really need is a, like we need something else besides seconds to count in order to say this algorithm does 50 of these operations and this one does 10, therefore this one is better. So I want you to think about the constituent pieces that are required to sort a list and which one of those pieces are countable so that we can count something and compare right this is where this is going to lead us to algorithmic complexity now don't leave yet I want I want my seven minutes because I started late I just want to go through the assignment with you not the solutions though just the assignment actually I'm just going to show you the databases Okay, so here are two databases. Um, someone in the last class asked me why did I pick Disney princesses. It's like, well, I had to choose something. And I've seen a lot of commercials for Wreck-It Ralph. Right? So that's your answer. Disney, Disney princesses have been in the news somewhat. Right? So I just chose a few Disney princesses. I made Elsa a bitch, though. <laughs> well, she's frigid, right? So she follows no one. And she, um, she doesn't like anyone's tweets. Or she doesn't like anyone's chirps, sorry, chirps. Um, except for the one where uh, Belle says, so Belle says she, gets, she got caught by the beast. Where did I say? Uh, yeah, help, I'm being held captive by a beast. Is liked only by Elsa. <laughs> um, okay, so here's a database of, so this is the user ID. This is the name of the user. And I, now, I'm going to have to clarify this with Vincent. I think he now regrets letting me help him. But um, one of these two lists, okay. so in the assignment, the, it's user ID, name, followers. But how the assignment defines followers is by users that Mulan is following. So I inverted that currently. That's why all the doc strings are wrong. Because I followers means people following you, but not on the assignment. Okay, so. Read the assignment very carefully because I may we may change it. So, but in any case, the way I've written it now, okay, no, I'll stick with how the assignment has done it. User ID, username, uh, people who follow the this user, and people who this user follows. 
Okay, so notice there are some empty lines here, right? You, you don't have to be followed by anyone and you don't have to be following anyone. So do not remove empty lines from this file. It's going to screw everything up, right? Because you're counting. You're saying one, two, three, four. This fourth line contains information and it contains the, it contains the information that no one is following you. Um, follows aren't commutative, right? You can follow me without me following you. This isn't like friendship on Facebook, right? Following is a different beast. These are the tweets. So this is a tweet. This is the tweet ID, a numerical ID for the tweet. This is the numerical ID of the user who chirped it. I'm just going to say tweet. You all know what I'm talking about. Um, this is a tweet in itself. These are the, well, hashtags. Pound the heck. Percent tags, whatever. Uh, the, the percent signs do count towards the character limit, right? So do count these, but the hashtags don't include the hash, right? So th this is the you, uh, tweet ID, user ID, tweet, chirp, uh, tags, likes, dislikes, right? So this is a chirp with that ID made by this user that has this content that's liked by no one. <laughs> What? Ariel really feels strongly about making the ocean great again, right? <laughs> I better stop myself before I go way too far. But anyways, so uh, this is a tweet by Ariel, make the ocean great again. It has no tags. It's liked by no one. It's disliked by Elsa. Because I think I tried to make it so that Elsa disliked everyone's, everyone's chirp, right? 100 is Mulan. Okay, well, I'm gonna have, I, have to, I have to fix this for a myriad of reasons. It's super hard doing this, right? Because I had to come up with the database, right? And then test the code on a database of my own creation, which I just, I should not have made this bargain in the words of Hans, no, 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 no. Lando, Landel Calrissian. In the words of Landel Calrissian, I should not have made this bargain. Yeah. Nope, I guess that would be in the hash. Can you hash a hash? Like, what happens when you do it on Twitter? When you say hash hash? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you guys can go now. Have a good one.